Take a look at this video my buddy Flank Thomas sent me. Why on earth is there a whole sex dungeon underneath this mound in El Paso? What is this evil lair used for, aside from storing the souls of the damned? Now, your first thought might be, it has something to do with drainage, but that's not the answer at all. Let's find out just what the hell is going on here. What's underneath the mound is coming up right after this. If you are watching this, you are under attack right now. No, not outside your window, on whatever device you have chosen. Cyber hackers, identity thieves, ransomware. You're going up against the worst people in the world and you don't even know it. That's why you need private internet access, a VPN that is your last line of defense. Private internet access hides your IP address and encrypts your internet connection, shielding you from the prying eyes of ISPs, network admins, and government censors. It also never records or stores user data, and its no logs policy has been proven multiple times in a court of law. I love how it can be used to watch sports that might not be available in your region, change your location, and say goodbye to blackouts. Right now, you can use my link below and grab an 83% discount on private internet access. That's just $2.03 a month, and you also get four extra months absolutely free. You can use private internet access to protect up to 10 devices at the same time, and it's available on all platforms. Again, just go to my link below and get an 83% discount. Just $2.03 a month, plus four months free. Private internet access. Before we get into the sex dungeon, we have to understand the entirety of a professional infield and ask a very important question. What's the biggest threat to baseball? No, it's not Giants pitcher Sammy Long taking 18 seconds in between pitches or players actually having fun. It's water. More specifically, the type of water that comes from the sky, more commonly known as rain. To avoid disappointing thousands of fans and losing out on tons of revenue, baseball stadiums need to be constructed in such a way that they can avoid rainouts and damaged fields. When Coors Field in Denver was constructed in the mid-90s, architects and HVAC experts knew that it was crucial they build a field that was able to handle a flood, given Coors Field proximity to the South Platte River. On top of the field, you have two to three inches of dirt, standard stuff, but beneath that dirt you have layers of specifically selected sand and gravel that's capable of draining as much as four to five inches of water every hour. Four to five inches? That's enough. More than enough, in my opinion. Those protective layers mean that mild weather isn't going to kill the prospect of playing a game given it won't retain too much water. But that can be a double-edged sword. That minuscule level of absorption means the field needs to be watered every day to be soft enough to play on. And all that water has to go somewhere. The drainage system serves to combat both rain and the man-made watering that happens daily. Interesting, kind of like a yin and yang thing here. Now here's the interesting part. At Coors Field, that water flows into a massive vault behind the stadium underneath the parking lot. And this vault is huge. It's got the ability to collect an estimated one million gallons gallons of water. It's so much water it's breaking my brain trying to picture what that might look like. That water in the vault is pumped into storm sewer systems or in a smaller collection that evaporates. This is a far cry from the drainage system at the Oakland Coliseum, which is made up of low-level employees scooping shit water into a bucket. So what's underneath that top layer? Well, you've got about 10 to 14 inches. God, that sounds so unnecessary. Who would ever need that much of something called the root zone? The root zone is made up of a blend of sand and peat moss and necessary for a healthy infield and drainage. Roger Bossard is the head groundskeeper for the Chicago White Sox and his work with the team since 1967 has earned him the nickname, the Sod Father. That's pretty clever. Bassard patented his own drainage system at Guaranteed Rate Field, which 19 other teams then adopted for their own use. But it's always been the sod that sets Bassard apart. In 1984, a member of the Saudi royal family hired Bassard to build a natural turf soccer field in the desert, the first of its kind. To make it work, Bassard filled two jumbo jets with California sod and chartered them halfway across the world. Man, the Saudis will pay for anything with that oil money. It just goes to show that the greatest experts in groundskeeping flock to baseball, where the work is the trickiest. Drainage. Drainage. 
is one of the biggest factors that sets a high-level MLB field apart from the shittiest little league field you remember playing on when you were 10 years old. Some fields, well, they don't even have proper drainage. At best, they'll have a slope of about 6 inches per 100 feet of field that will keep the water from piling up and ruining the playing surface. When the drainage is that rudimentary, you'll need actual human beings to physically take the water in a bucket, pick it up, and move it somewhere else. And some major league infields that don't have proper drainage will use pumps to suck the water out of there faster than your mom would. Now that we understand infield drainage, let's finally cover what's underneath the mound. For the pitching mound, you've got a regular infield mix that's built up into a hill. And on top of that, you have about four inches of packing clay. It's crucial to have clay rather than dirt or infield mix because of the wear and tear a mound sees, much higher than the rest of the infield and probably about as much as your mom. It's that way so there's no risk of holes that could cause a blowout that might impact the game or a pitcher's ability to throw strikes. Well, that's all except for a very special field, the one I showed you earlier in this video. That's Southwest University Park, home of the El Paso Chihuahuas, the AAA affiliate of the San Diego Padres. The architects who designed the park, which opened in 2014, wanted to do something a little different, something that would allow them to use the park for more than just baseball. And what's the biggest difference between a baseball field and other playing surfaces? Well, football and soccer fields don't have mounds with rubber slabs sticking out of them. In order to accommodate both the Chihuahuas and the El Paso Locomotive, the local soccer team, the architects installed a removable mound. The removable mound is made up of a number of components, including a structural steel frame for steel plates and a clay mound, vertical support columns for platform stability, structural steel walls with supports, and supporting compacted granular fill. Prior to the invention of the removable mound, it would take as many as two days to clear out a mound, plus another two to build up another one. As you could guess, that would really limit the amount of non-baseball related events a stadium could accommodate. The Esto retractable mound, which looks like a NASA launch pad, was invented by the late architect and sports owner Wayne Estopinal, and it runs about 250K but it's worth it. Using a retraction device that consists of four screw jacks and a two horsepower motor, the mound can lower as many as 12 inches over the span of just 10 minutes and raise it back up in another 10. And I can attest that if you only need 10 minutes to get it back up, you're gonna have a lot of satisfied customers. After that, all you need to do is cover the clay on the mound and replace the foam and sod around the edges to create a level playing field. All in all, the conversion only takes about an hour, which means you could hypothetically play baseball and soccer on the same day or back-to-back -back days. When it's all said and done, that space underneath the mound isn't a sex dungeon at all. El Paso isn't the only team in baseball that now sports a retractable mound. MLB teams are getting in on the action. Globe Life Park in Arlington, Texas boasts the same type of retractable mound, allowing them to host events beyond baseball. There are five stadiums that use the Esto retractable mound. Globe Life, Southwestern, Werner Park in Omaha, Nebraska, Oniac Stadium in Tulsa and Louisville Slugger Field in Kentucky where the original retractable mound was first put to use. So what did we learn today? We learned that six inches is definitely enough, that some stadiums have retractable mounds, and that your mom is a hoe.